Okay, I'm going to demonstrate this uh, Tektronix scope to you. Uh, it's a 7603 mainframe uh, with three plugins. There's a 7A26 vertical plugin, 7A18, and a 7B53A time base. Uh, I'll switch the scope on now and let it warm up for a moment. So you can see the graticule illuminations come on, and as the tube warms up, uh, we have the readouts at the top of the screen and the first of the traces. Uh, so this scope, because it's got two dual trace plugins, uh, has four traces. Uh, we've got the first one enabled at the moment, trace one in the left hand uh, uh, slot. And we'll use this probe just to demonstrate that it works. If I plug that in there and pop the uh, probe into the calibrator, we have a healthy signal and I can move it around adjust the attenuator and uh, it changes size try and adjust the triggering, there we go, so we can see it more clearly it's all good uh, test the other one, channel 2 uh, let's have a look that's uh, oh, when you change trigger source to channel 2, there we go, nice and stable and uh, the attenuator settings all work, notice the readout's okay we'll check out Channel 3, we need to change the trigger source to the right, vertical mode to the right, and here we have channel 3 is all good, different attenuator settings all working happily, notice the readouts followed us, and we'll go to the fourth channel, change the triggering source to that one, and uh, it's a bit off the screen, but uh, that's also in good order. I haven't recompensated the probe for each of the different channels because I'm just demonstrating this quickly. But that's uh, working as it should do, and we can change the time base. Uh, it goes all the way from uh, 5 seconds per division, uh, all the way through to 50 nanoseconds, and there's the expansion function, so we can get 5 nanoseconds per division, which is uh, very dim because it's scanning very, very fast. And we'll return that to normal so we can see everything. Uh, so that's basically all four channels working. Now I'd like to demonstrate the rise time of the two different plugins. Because this scope, I think it's nominally rated at 100 megahertz, but the two plugins are a bit different. The 7A26 is a bit faster than the 7A18. So we'll start uh, demonstrating the 7A26. We'll go for the left vertical slot, left trigger source, and we'll use channel 1 for want of a better choice, there we go, that's that one, you notice you can press the identify button to uh, see which trace it is and this is the, this is connected to a very fast pulse generator with a rise time of like 16 picoseconds uh, it's not perfectly terminated but it'll give us an idea of the scope rise time and let us estimate the bandwidth so there's the uh, uh, pulse signal and we need to speed up the time base so we can see it. The negative going edges are a bit scruffy um, because that's the way the pulse generator makes them. But the positive edges are nice and clean so we need to speed this up. Uh, we, it's better to put it on the normal triggering for this so we can see the edge. There we go. Uh, that's at 50 nanoseconds per centimeter. We'll speed it up even further to 5 nanoseconds per division. And if you can see that, I'll crank up the intensity a bit. Uh, that, yeah, so the pulse shape isn't perfect because the uh, wiring's not great. But if I just expand that a bit, oops. Oops. Get it on the screen. Oh, that's too big. Go back to that one. Uh, just to give you an idea. We call the connectors. We've got a rise time here of not very much. Let's have a just move it across a bit. So the scruffy bit there is because of the cabling, but that rise time is looking at about two and a half, three nanoseconds, which uh, is a bandwidth of about 115 megahertz, which is pretty healthy for a 100 megahertz scope. Uh, the 7A18 plugin, which we'll try over here, if I change to the right. Vertical mode, uh, change it to that input. Trigger source there, 50 milliseconds, there we go. That one actually looks a bit tidier, I think the uh, inputs match better. Um, there you can see the rise time is about 5 nanoseconds, it's a little bit slower, which gives it a bandwidth of 75 megahertz. 
which is what you'd expect uh, for a 7A18 in the 7603 mainframe. Um, the whole thing is in working order as you can see, it's only vices that occasionally the readouts wander off the screen and you have to give it a bit of a tap and they come back. Uh, I haven't uh, attended to that because the calibration stickers are all still intact even from 20 years ago. So this scope has been in use in my lab for the last few years and it's honestly had no repairs since 1994 I think, which is pretty good going, pretty reliable. Uh, uh, oh no, 1996 it says on the sticker on the side. It's all in good shape. The 7A26 plug-in is a bit faded, I think it spent time in a lab looking at the sun, but uh, it works well enough. Um, and uh, there's a chip on this knob here, but uh, it's still perfectly usable. Uh, so there you go, that's the uh, 7603 scope. Oh, well, one other thing, while we're here, we'll just check out the delayed time base, just to prove that that works, if I put it back on normal time base, so there we go. We can see the pulse waveform from the uh, pulse generator. If we wanted, for example, to examine one of these peaks here, we can uh, use the delayed time base. I hope you can see the intensified portion of the trace and move the delay over to the peak we're interested in. Let's uh, have that one there. And uh, choose a time base that covers it nicely. Then pop the knob back in. And now we have a, uh, oh yeah, we can move the delay so that we can actually see that portion of the waveform. Uh, so the uh, delayed time base on the scope allows you to uh, uh, examine waveforms and effectively zoom in in the analog domain and wander your way along and look at the edges. There we go, there's another edge and back to the first one. So uh, that's delayed time base working. Uh, if I uh, go back, set it back to normal uh, we don't need that anymore. I just proved that all of the four traces work. I put it back on auto trigger. We can switch on alt mode on that plugin and alt on that mode and tell it to alternate between both plugins and we should have all the four traces. There we go, one, two, three, four. You can identify each one by pressing its button. That's the top one. Identify, identify that one, identify that one and I'd identify that one. So that's uh, four traces all at the same time, all honest, analog, full bandwidth, uh, all working. So uh, there we go, that's the scope in action. Uh, everything works as far as I can see, and I've been using it in my lab for the last two or three years without any trouble. Thanks for watching.